we have covered so far the period till 1927 and we are going to move on today covering three years time thus um, trying to understand the various responses of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar to various situations which were emerging at that point of time and at that point of history. So as we are, we are aware that Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar was uh, trained in the various areas of the knowledge and his life and all his efforts were directed at creating a society which is free from discrimination, which is free from suffering, which is just society. And uh, his method was to be aware of what's happening on the uh, so-called community level, what's happening on the national level, what's happening on the global level. So his mind was tuned to understand various events that has been unfolding throughout the world. Not only that, but he studied very deeply uh, important events that has had taken place in the history of the world. So naturally, he studied revolutions which had happened in the world. So he naturally studied the French Revolution, he naturally studied the American Revolution, he naturally studied the British history, he naturally studied the Chinese revolution and he got himself familiar with various ideas, various social structures, various factors, various leaders, various circumstances which led to the revolutions in this country or in these particular areas of the world and his aim is very clear that he wanted to start or initiate a peaceful revolution in India. So his knowledge was derived from the history, his knowledge was derived from studying the society in which he was working, his knowledge was derived from the social, economical, economic, political events that were taking place around him. And this period, 1927 to 1930, is very crucial because it shows how Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar is applying himself in various areas. So we are going to look at broadly the areas in which Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar was applying himself so as, so as to use his derived intelligence for social enlightenment, for social change, for social transformation, for the social upliftment. In this period we can see Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar is applying himself in the area on the level of the community. Of course, that's the caste-based community in which even the depressed classes are divided into various sub-castes. So that's one area in which he is applying himself, applying his intelligence, applying his knowledge, applying his time, applying his energy. He is applying himself in the educational field as to what can be the status of the education, what can be the form of the education and 
how education can help the people. He is applying himself in the legislative, legislative assembly. Because in 1927 he became a member of the Bombay Legislative Assembly. So he is applying himself. He is applying his knowledge. He is applying, applying his energy in the Bombay Legislative Council. Council. He is applying his personality in the area or the big question of how the power can be transferred from the Britishers to the Indians. Not to the Hindus or Muslims, but to the Indians, including the depressed classes. He is applying his time and energy in building the mass movements, like for example the Mahad, water tank, Satyagraha. So in this crucial period of 1927 to 1930, we, have, we are witnessing kind of Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar applying himself in all these very many areas with a focus to transform the society, with a focus to uplift the society. And also in terms of his personality, in terms of his personal life, he has to make his living. So he is also applying himself in order to become financially sound, become financially independent. So he is now stretched out in all very many areas I, that I just enlisted before you and I am going to look at all those important areas one by one. So let us begin with how during this period of 1927 to 1930 Dr. Baba Ambedkar applying himself on the community level. So as I said that even among the depressed classes there are various castes even today. And the situation was not different from the situation of today. There was same inter-caste rivalry among the uh, very many castes, among the different classes. Very importantly, Dr. Bhavaza Ambedkar in Pune came for a meeting which was organized in Mangwara. And there were several leaders from the Mang caste were present. And in this meeting, Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar spelled out some very important things. One of the things that he said that the people from Chambhar caste accuse him of being just a leader of the Mahars. Now, if you look at the period 1927-1930, there were the people, the leaders of Chambar caste who were saying that Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar is representing the interest of the Mahar caste. Bhavas has spelled out two, three things. He said that he was instrumental in getting P. Balu, a famous cricketer from the Chambar caste to the Bombay Municipal Corporation. He was instrumental in getting P. Balu. He even celebrated the successes of P. Balu. A Mang boy was living at his place during this period and Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar was taking care of his education. And very importantly he said that if a suitable leader emerge from the Chambar community, he is ready to step down and let the leader have a leading role in the movement. Some um, people from Chambar community complained that the Mahars discriminate against the Chambhar. And he was trying to argue that the Brahmins are better than the Mahars. Replying to that, Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar said that we should not create division among ourselves. We should be united against our sort of common problems. So if we notice 
that Dr. Baba Sambedkar is going beyond the caste. He is trying to build alliances, he is trying to create faith, he is trying to create trust. He is even trying to let go his own leadership. Not only this, but in order to study the problem of education and how in the education the untouchables or the depressed classes are discriminated, he went to Chalisgao in order to study a school where the uh, students from the depressed classes were made to sit outside of the classes and in the veranda. So he went there in order to study it or to find the facts for himself so that he can present it in front of the committees as to what is the status of the education of depressed classes. So these particular events indicate his deep involvement in the issues which were concerning the community. He is trying to break the gaps between the various castes within the depressed classes. Very tragically, when he went to Chalisgao in 1929, he went to the Chalisgao train station. He came out, our people came and they welcomed him, but there was no Tongawala who will take Dr. Baba Sambedkar to the place where he was supposed to go. Because no caste Hindu was ready to run the Tonga. In this situation, some people were asked to drive the Tanga, who were not trained in driving the Tanga, they never drive, drove the Tanga before. So when they were driving a Tanga, there came a river and he, they made an accident. In that accident, Dr. Baba Sambedkar fell down from the Tanga and he got very seriously hurt. He got very seriously hurt and he couldn't walk for several days. We look at how Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar was applying himself on the community level, on the so-called local level. We can see very clearly that he was the leader of the common people. He was the leader of common man. He was very concerned with solving the problems, the, inter, the, the, the rivalry between the caste within the depressed classes. So I would like to sum up two, three things here that he is very devoted to work for the interest of all the depressed classes because he made clear the direction of his politics in the Bahishkrut Bharat that there are three particular categories of the people, the Brahmins, non-Brahmins and the Bahishkrit. And he is very much trying to build up that kind of organization where the divided among the Bahishkrits will come together and build the strong solidarity and power. So he is trying to go beyond the caste, he is trying to build alliances, he is trying to understand the problems of the common people from the depressed classes. He is even ready to travel, even take the risks of travelling to the unknown territories. He is trying to help the people from so called other scheduled castes or other depressed classes to have the position of power. He is even trying very hard to help personally to set up an example of his own self of how he is transcending the caste in his own personal life. The second area that he was applying himself during this period of 1927 to 1930 is the area of education. At that time, the Bombay University was coming into shape and there was a debate as to what will be the status of the colleges in the Bombay area. And Dr. Ambedkar suggested that there should be the arrangement of cooperation between the colleges and the university which was to be coming into shape. And while talking about the Bombay Senate, talked about proper representation in the Senate for the members of the backward classes and the depressed classes. 
So he talked about the Bombay University Senate and he talked about the representation of the people or the members of the Bahishkrit or members of the depressed classes and the members of the backward classes. He gave an evidence before the Saad committee during this period of three years. Saad committee was appointed to look at the educational issues of the depressed classes and Dr. Bawas Ambedkar citing various facts, uh, engaging in dialogue with the Sartre committee plead a case as to how the depressed classes are treated, discriminated in the educational institute. And the report, when it was published, they brought in these facts in front of the government. What can be said about his uh, involvement in the education, educational development, which is reflected in the third area that he was applying himself in the Bombay Legislative Council as a member of the Bombay Legislative Council. In the debates, he was bringing in together his vast knowledge of finance and economics and budget during the discussion in the Bombay Legislative Council. And he is making very logical, very rational arguments about how the budgeting can be done, how the budget can be allocated to various heads. And he is very particular in allocating the budget to the education. Comments that suitable budget should be dedicated to the education so that education is accessible to the citizens of the Bombay Presidency. Talking about the taxation, he is talking about the prohibition because there was a debate going on about the prohibition of liquor. We can go into these areas in the latter sort of discussions. He moved a bill to abolish the Maharvatan. During this period, he moved a bill for the abolition of the Maharvatan because he thought that the Maharvatan enslaves the people not only from the Mahar community but also the Ramoshis and the Holiyas of Karnataka because that way they become the bonded laborers of the government and he wanted to move a bill in order to aid, abolish the Maharvatan. He was, of course, he, he, he couldn't get that bill passed and the, that bill was passed in 1959 after his death, three years after his death. The Maharvatans were abolished. He is making speeches on uh, family planning. He is very active member of the Bombay Legislative Council. He is applying himself very thoroughly in order to have proper laws in place which will benefit the people. So he is not just talking about the issues of the depressed classes. He is not here only talking about the issues of the backward classes, but he is talking about the entire citizenry. He is talking about how the legal structures, how the taxation, how the budget can be deployed so that it can help the people. The fourth area he was applying himself is to build a moment, movement and give it a momentum so that the people will be galvanized to act, trying to build a mass movement and he is trying to build the movement on a very practical point. He is trying to prove whether the depressed classes are the Hindus or not. That is the basic issue because the upper caste leaders are trying to show that the depressed classes are the Hindus. And Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar through this mass movement was trying to convince the depressed classes that they are not Hindus. So the very important question about this particular building up of the movement is whether the depressed classes are the part of Hindus or not. So in order to prove his point and also to 
bring the people together he launches a very famous movement which is known in the history as the mahar movement 1923 sk bole passes the resolution and that resolution is affirmed in 1926 that all the public reservoirs will be thrown open for the public usage so all the members all all from all various castes can drink water from the common public reservoirs so dr ambedkar wants to test whether that's valid so a conference in orga is organized in order to test the validity of that resolution whether the depressed classes have access to the water of the public is a wire and that famous tank in mahal is known as chaudar talao or chaudar tank there were even the um, conflicts of opinion about the name of the tank because the upper caste when the when the when the when the case went into the litigation the upper caste argued that the name of the tank is choudhury tank and it belongs to certain choudhury it's not the public reservoir so a conference was held at mahal in march during the march 1920 1927 and arrangements were made by surendranath tipnis subedar savadkar and anantrao chitra in that particular conference it was decided that there will be a procession to the to the water tank and this mass rally was organized by the bahishkrut hitakarni sabha that dr baba saheb ambedkar founded in 1924 as an organization to build the movement and it was the first mass rally of the bh which was to be held in mahal in konkan dr bhavas ambedkar chose it chose the place in konkan because there were a lot of retired subedars and jamedars from the mahar community in that area and they formed a very strong, strong support group to dr bhavas ambedkar dr bhavas ambedkar also used his newspaper which was founded in on april 3 1927 bahishkrit bharat to get support for the mahar water tank movement so he is working on the organizational level he founded a committee of the people who will look into the matter who will arrange make the make the arrangements uh, who, who will put in place the various various logistics which were needed because 10000 people were going to participate in the mahar satyagraha and bahishkrut bharat was used as a publicity tool for getting the support of the people after the kolaba district conference after the mahar conference in the march it was planned that there will be a satyagraha conference in december establish the right to drink water in this second mahal conference about 10 to 15000 people participated and dr baba saheb ambedkar made a very important speech on that day in which he clearly laid down his vision for his people and the directions which he was going to take in the future on this on the day 25th december manusmriti was publicly burned by the people present there and when the uh, the uh, people who came for the rally they marched to the water tank they drank water from the water tank and when they were returning after drinking the water from the water tank they were met by the violent caste hindus and a riot broke in where 
the people who came for the rally were seriously injured. Then the case went into the court, and uh, in the in the in the two courts, uh, courts in the lower courts, the courts the case went in favor of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, and in the high court, the matter was made very technical and complicated. The issue was whether the tank was public or not. And that decision came in 1936. So the case has to wait for 10 years. There is much more which can, that can be said about how Dr. Bhasa Ambedkar mobilized so many people. There is much more which can be said about what actually happened there, about the case itself, as to how it went through argumentation and how Dr. Bhasa Ambedkar testified in the court and his very acute sort of testimony, his brilliance of his legal knowledge can be seen in this court case of Mahar. And he came to Mahar in December very dramatically. He took a boat from Bombay and sailed down to Konkan. Not alone, but with hundreds of people. So they came in order to participate in this second Satyagraha conference by a boat from Bombay. There was no water, of course, in the Mahar conference because the caste Hindus won't allow the depressed classes members to have water. Water of rupees 40 was purchased in order to uh, quench the thirst of the people who came for the conference. The pandal which was erected for the conference was named after the local deity called Vireshwar. And in that pandal there was a photo of a Gandhi because Dr. Ambedkar thought that in this country nobody is talking about the issue of the untouchables and Gandhi is talking about that. So let us have his photo in the pandal. That is in 1927 and we know the history. So if we look at Dr. Bhavasa Ambedkar's attitude, he was very all inclusive. He was trying to use all the resources at his disposal. He was trying to use the goodwill of all the people who were very much concerned about ending the practice of untouchability and the caste system. And this is very significant that he was trying to engage all those forces which were trying to end the caste system or which he thought are trying to end the caste system. In the case of Gandhi, he was to be proven wrong in the latter days. The text of the speech that Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar gave on that day is very important. He addressed the common mass, he addressed the Hindus, he addressed the women who came for the conference, he addressed the government, he addressed the goodwill of the people. So it's a very important speech which we have to dissect at some point of the time in the course of our, 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 our talk. So that was another area area of movement building in which Dr. Ambedkar was applying himself. There is the fifth area where Dr. Bhavas Ambedkar was applying himself and that area was the area of the transfer of power. Because as we have seen, the British government has decided that the power will be gradually transferred to the Indians. Now, when they talked about the power to be transferred to the Indians, it is very complicated because the Indians were are divided into religions uh, on uh, different castes. So, how that power was to be transferred from the Britishers to the Indians? There was a declaration of 1917, there was the reforms of 1919 and in order to study the working of the reforms of 1919, a commission was constituted and that commission is famous in the history as the Simon Commission. The aim of the Simon Commission was to study the working of the diarchy or the dual power that came into existence in 1919 
and to suggest the way forward as to how indians can be involved in the self governance dr bhas ambedkar naturally gave an evidence before the simon commission and the caste hindus were trying to brand dr baba saheb ambedkar as the traitor unpatriot they even boycotted his class because he was also teaching during this period but that didn't deter dr baba saheb ambedkar from not giving the evidence before the simon commission in run up to the round table conference this simon commission should be looked at as a very landmark event in the history of the transfer of power to the indians and here dr bhas ambedkar is making a very important statement that we are indians first and indian last and then we are hindus and muslims and sikhs and what not so he is talking about the india as a whole his all inclusive principle is still very clear and visible in his response to the simon commission as to when the power is to be transferred from the britishers to the indians he is not talking about he is very much concerned about the interest of the depressed classes but he is not making it just a rallying point he is talking about the india as a state as a mechanism which will benefit the various constituents of the indian society in the longer term not a trying at that particular point of history to show how hindu nationalism can be very detrimental to the untouchables he is not trying to make that point here he is trying to speak on the behalf of the indian he is trying to speak on the behalf of the indians as to how they would like to govern themselves in the future important strategic thinking that dr bhas ambedkar is applying and also his whole rhetoric his whole narration his speeches his testimonies are directed towards not creating the divisions so he is very all inclusive even when his community is excluded by the majority caste hindus it's very important principle that we can see here simon commission was headed by john simon but there was a very important person in the committee who later became the prime minister of britain when india got independence and he was the leader of the labor party at that time when the simon commission came to india clement atli who was a labor mp was the member of the simon commission and because he was a he was from the labor party he was very much concerned about the problem of laborers in india because there was a growing working class movement in england and the power or the opinion was shifting in favor of the labor party it attained its sort of summit when macdonald ramse macdonald became the prime minister of the britain in 1930s it's a very significant moment in the history of england or history of britain that the labor party came into power and that's another topic which can be discussed as to how the labor party coming of power of the labor party molded the position of the british government vis-a-vis -vis their approach to india so atli who was member of the simon commission who later became the prime minister of britain asked very important questions and pertinent questions when he testified dr baba saheb ambedkar and the exchange between them is concerned with the labor problem so atli asked are the members of the depressed classes working in industry in cotton mills and so on and what did dr baba saheb ambedkar reply Bosser said, "All of them, the depressed class men, are all liberals." Now, let me ask another question. You have not got my point. At least, said you have not got my point. My point is this: 
I am talking of industry. You have members of the depressed classes who work in villages. For the most part in certain occupation. But are there large numbers of the depressed classes engaged in industry? Now we can look at the range of awareness of Atlee. He was very, he is very informed person about the laborers. Not only in, 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 the, in, in England or in the Europe, but also in India. And Dr. Bhaskar Ambedkar replied, a very large number of people are employed in the industry. And at least said, do they cease in any degree to be untouchable? At least ask the question to Baba Sahib, do they cease in any degree to be untouchable? So he asked, when they become the uh, laborers in the industries, do they cease by in any degree to be untouchable? Baba Sahib said, no, the depressed class man is entirely left out of the weaving department. The most paying department. They are not employed in the weaving department. He can only enter departments like the thrustal department and others. Atli asked, why? And Baba Sahib replied, on account of untouchability. Simon Commission testified Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar on various issues, on the issue of how the power, transfer of power can reach to the depressed classes and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar pleaded for the joint electorate, he pleaded for a lot of things that we can see coming into the round table conference. So in the run-up to the conference, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar was selected as one of the members to participate in the round table conference. So 89 Indians were selected to come to the conference. Congress was invited to come to the round table conference, but they boycotted the first round of the conference. They did not go there. Dr. Baba Ambedkar went to the round table conference and he of course travelled by the ship. That ship followed the route from Marseilles and went to London. And Dr. Baba Ambedkar wanted to seek information from his uh, very close associate Shutarkar and he urged him to keep him updated about the responses of Congress, about the responses of other Indians to this round table conference. So Shutarkar sent regular mails, regular information to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar informing him about the status of the Indian society because the voyage will, was going to take one month. When Dr. Ambedkar arrived in England in the month of October, he lobbied with the MPs from various parties. He went to see the members of various parties, he gave talks, he made them personally and some of the people he knew very closely because of his uh, studies in England. So as we can see that during this period, very crucial period, during 1927-1930, Dr. Baba Ambedkar was, in, was applying himself in the areas which I have mentioned and I am going to repeat them again. He was applying himself on the community level. He was applying himself in the educational process, in the, in the, in the, educational, in the area of education. He was applying himself in the legislative council. He was applying himself to build the movement. He was applying himself as to how best the power can be transferred to the Indians and during that process, how the interests of the depressed classes can best be secured. And we, uh, we can see clearly the outcomes of all his applications in, on, in different fields. And we can see very clearly how he is applying him, himself in these areas had led to the development and the growth of the movement of the depressed classes in the future.